Sir, uh, I know it's a second day afternoon time. I hope we can still be awake for the next uh, few sessions. Um, so today I'm going to talk about building a data transformation pipeline. Right? But before I start and explaining all of that, just want to do a quick audience check. Um, how many data engineers in the room? Okay, cool, good. Um, how many data architects in the room? A few, okay, cool. Um, how about data analysts? Okay, um, I think there are still a few people who have not raised their hands, let me see. Um, let me try a few more questions. Um, how many people have no SQL? Come on, SQL, yeah, okay. How about Python? Okay, that's good, cool, yeah, thank you. And and how about some people who, you know, for whom nothing makes sense, whatever I've said before, none of these make sense? No? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Other. So data transformation pipeline, um, um, it's a pipeline that helps you build a framework for your business or for your data analyst to transfer and manipulate their own data, right? So you would have heard about a pipeline that you use to extract the data, to load the data. You know, you have like hundreds of source system, you're extracting the data and putting them into your target system. But data transformation pipeline is slightly different. It only takes care of the T in ETL. Right? It doesn't talk about extraction, it doesn't talk about loading. It assumes the data is already there in the system and you only want to transform it. Yeah? So we'll talk about how we are driving autonomy using this pipeline, the technologies. We are using DBT, we are using Airflow, target containers, and solution architect and some of the code snippets for a pipeline. Now, when I say driving autonomy in data analytics, so in Thomson Reuters, like every other organization, we have multiple teams in data analytics. So we have a team um, an, or an enterprise data lake who takes care of building the lake, who takes care of building the data pipelines, uh, you know, to ingest the data from multiple source systems and putting them into the data system. So this team um, has data engineers and data architects. Now we have analytics team that takes care of building the insight, that takes care of building the analytical models, that takes care of you know building the dashboards or the insights. Right? So the data lake team works very closely with the source systems to understand the data. And the analytic system works very closely with the business team to understand the business problem. Right? So let's say if you have to build a recommendation engine or a customer churn model, right? So this analytics team will work closely with the business. Now the data lake team gets the raw data and put it, you know, they'll put it in a lake. We use Snowflake to build a lake, so they'll put it in the lake. Now, for the data scientists, they need the data in a format that their model or their dashboard can understand. But there is a gap, right? Because the lake is bringing the raw data and you need the data in a format that you can understand. So to fill this gap, we have built a data transformation pipeline. So this pipeline allows our data analyst and our data scientist to transform the data, to build their own marks using simple SQL queries. Right? So you're not um, building, and you, you don't care about the operations, you don't care about production, deployment, release, all of that is taken care of by this pipeline. All you do is write your SQL, put it in GitHub, and that's it. Your data will be transformed automatically. Now how do we do that? The first thing that we had to decide was to, which tool um, should we pick up for handling, which tool works best for transformation. So we looked at certain tools and few of our criteria was um, you know, less licensing cost, um, less upskilling, so we could use the existing knowledge of our employees, um, something that was very easy to use. Um, so for all of these factors, we considered several tools and DBT fits the bill. So how many here knows DBT or have heard about DBT, use DBT? Okay, that's good, quite a lot. Yeah, so as some of you might already know, DBT is an open source tool and it also has a licensed uh, version, but we use the open source. So DBT is very simple, like if you know Python, right, you install a Python package with pip install Python package, right? Similarly, you install DBT, pip install DBT. That's how you got DBT in your laptops. So this is, like there are so many benefits, I can talk about DBT, but I don't want to endorse it. Uh, so it, allows you to write simple SQL queries and build your mark, right? So if you know SQL, it will take probably two hours for you to get a good hands-on on email. 
So DBT assumes that the data is already there in your system. It only takes care of the transformation. It only takes care of you know, manipulating the data. You can write simple SQL and now even Python in DBT. So once we were very comfortable in DBT, we were sure that this is the tool that you want to use to transform the data. Now the next thing was to find out how we are going to build the workflows, how we are going to build the orchestration. So similar to DBT, we did a uh, you know, uh, analysis on several tools to understand uh, which tools, which tools should we use. Now for orchestration, you do have uh, DBT Cloud as well that you can use to do the orchestration. But our requirement was to pick a tool that serves not only DBT but other purposes as well. So for example, if um, my analyst want to write a Python code, right, they should be able to orchestrate that as well in this tool. Or uh, let's say if I want to uh, make some API calls to pull the data, I should be able to put that as well in the lab. So we wanted, to we wanted a tool that could allow us to build a workflow with all of these. Right? So we make Airflow. Uh, so if you know, if you've used Airflow, anybody here has used Airflow? That's cool. So Airflow um, is a platform where you can write Python code to build your orchestration to build your workflow. And Airflow and DBT fits well. So the best thing about Airflow is, so let's say it's not a cloud agnostic tool. So let's say I have some um, data sitting in AWS, something in GCP, something in my local laptop, or something in on-premises server. I could combine all of these and build the orchestration or a workflow with all of these together in Airflow, right, using Python. So that's how we picked Airflow and we, picked, we, we saw that it could help us run our DBT workflows, it could help us run our Python codes, even third party APIs. So that's how we decided we're going to use Airflow. So the tool selection, all good. The next thing is to put it all together. So when you want to build a diagram and you want to talk about the architecture, can anybody, I saw there were some architects in the audience. What are the common architecture principles? Anybody from the audience? Most common architecture principles that you would hear about? Scalability, serverless, highly available. Right? These are the most common uh, principles that you would use. So we wanted to ensure that whatever we are building has all of these architecture principles. right? And uh, Thomson Reuters focuses on two main things when it comes to architecture principles. One, cloud first, we ensure that we are building our solutions in cloud. Second is our first preference is serverless. So we ensure that our design is preferring serverless. Right. So using that architecture principle, using the technology, this, this was the solution architect that we built. So if you look at the first thing, the, something, uh, the DBT image, right? So we started with creating a single Docker image which has Python and DBT. So we take that Docker image, we put it in the ECR. ECR is nothing but an Amazon registry to save your images. So if you use Docker, you would know Amazon ECR is nothing like a Docker repository. So we push our repository into the uh, Amazon ECR. From there, we create Amazon task, task definition and those tasks will launch a Fargate container. And every container will have its own DBT. If you use Fargate, Fargate is nothing but a serverless container, right? So it's similar to EC2, but it shuts down on its own. So whenever the Fargate container comes up, it has DBT installed in it. If you run the DBT model, once the model is run, container shuts down. So at every time when the container is coming up, it will install the image and it will pull your DBT project or any SQL files from the S3 buckets. And from there, it will push. Uh, so the Airflow is basically creating the container. Airflow is helping the container to come up. And then it shuts down on its own after pushing the data in Snowflake. So this is uh, a simple architecture diagram. Obviously, I've removed like monitoring um, uh, and all the rest of the production stuff. This is a uh, very simple. Uh, variation of a uh, complete architecture, but it covers the main uh, snippet that I wanted to um, talk about today. Right. So one thing here, if you see, um, every container has its own DBT image. Every container will run one model at a time. So that's how we are integrating DBT and Airflow. 
right? We are not recreating the workflow. What, so if you have used DBT, you know that it creates its workflow, it creates its lineage, all of that, right? We are not, we are just reusing that and putting that in here. So every time a container comes up, it runs one model and it shuts down. And how, that's how we make it more scalable. So let's say if you have 100 models, there will be 100 containers coming up, runs a model and shuts down. So there is no dependency. One model doesn't have to wait for the other model. So you can, you know, uh, so it's not concurrent. You can run hundreds and thousands of models. And with that, even the performance, right? So if, let's say, we are building complex models. So let's say models is nothing but SQL queries. Right? So if I have very complex queries, uh, my Farket container using the Snowflake compute engine will be able to handle it without any dependency on the, on the business. <coughs> So that's how we build up a system which is um, highly efficient, scalable, um, very performing in production. So now I'll just show a quick code snippet. Um, obviously, this is not my production code, but this is um, a good. This gives you a good um, example of how we are actually running. So if you see on the right side is my Docker file where I am installing Python first, and then I have PPT and just AWS CLI. On the left side, I have my entry point where I'm just calling. If you see the first statement, I'm popping my project from S3 to my container. Then I'm creating a directory in my container, and then I'm going into that directory. So if you see MKDIR, and then I'm going inside that directory. Now once, once I go inside the directory, that's when I'm running my DVD model. So I'm running one model at a time. So this is how every image is built. Every container that comes up will have this. So once a container is, is ready, that's when airflow kicks in. So this is how we are integrating airflow with ECS. Here if you see, it's an ECS task. So we are, um, if you use airflow, airflow has lots of operators. We're using inbuilt operators, ECS operator, which it uses to trigger the container. So over here we are passing all the necessary parameters to the ECS operator and we are yeah, building the task list. Now once you have your container up, you have your operator, now you want to just kick the operator. Now over here if you see, uh, the first statement for any models, it means every model in my DVD will kick a new container, right? So here I'm just calling the ECS operator, I'm building the task list, I'm passing the command. So if you see on the, uh, the blue line command hyphen m, that is a command that I'm passing in the container to run one model at a time, okay, which makes the system, uh, like I said, uh, more scale without any dependency. Now, dependency is there if it's a reference model. So in DBT, you can create a dependency, a lineage of two models, right? So we take the same lineage from DBT and we pass it to Airflow. And Airflow will trigger the containers according to that dependency. I'm sorry, I'm a woman of few words, uh, and that's it. <laughs>